Welcome back, all you real rats, cool cats. All my fellow Chumbas out there, my cyberpunks. We are launching the classes videos. Jumping right into the daimyo. These are going to be a little bit longer than your origins because obviously classes have a little bit more meat to them in terms of mechanics and all that good stuff. But we're going to jump right into it. But before we do, as in every other damn video, subscribe, click the bell if you like this kind of content. The like and dislike is up to you. Just give me the feedback. It's all I ask. Quick comment on what you like, what you didn't like, so I can tailor the content accordingly. Under heavy enemy fire, the Daimyo leads their unit, charging in with guns blazing and inspiring their allies with wild acts of courage. A dark figure watches carefully from the shadows, rifle trained on a distant target. With a deep breath, they bite hard on their lip and focus their rising fury. The bullet strikes the victim, the viper protecting its nest. Daimyo's are warriors first and foremost. They have a natural affinity for death, focusing on the kill. Some people think the Daimyo is a mindless brute, but it's not. Those people usually end up dead. Often, but not always, Daimyo's take on the leadership roles. They head up security heads, strategists, for corpse, or other dignitaries. While they're strong leaders and heavy weapons experts, they're not all-around combat experts, much like the Enforcer. Nor are they the smartest people in the room, like hackers or investigators. Daimyos are a mix of combat prowess and people skills. They take on leadership roles because most of the others are ill-suited for them. Many would-be leaders lacking the understanding of the dangers of the world, while the Daimyos plan for every possibility. To many who know them, Daimyos seem paranoid. Their persistent survival, however, suggests that paranoia may be the key to surviving the streets of San Francisco, or wherever you may be playing. Allies of the Daimyo find their loyalty and courage to be a comfort. They are Wan Long Warriors. For all of history, since the rise of the First Armies, they have been Daimyos. Reckless warriors willing to risk their lives to defeat the enemy. Warriors who know not only who, but what to destroy, to ensure that none of their targets make it out alive. In San Francisco, these people are in higher demand than ever before. Most lack the formal military training to become members of private armies. Instead, some join the myriad of crime syndicates, while many others become cyberpunks. Few live long enough to gain reputation, but that's the right combination of street smarts, combat prowess, and leadership skills the Daimyo can rise as a cyberpunk legend. Now, when you create a daimyo, it is a warrior, okay? And we're going to get into a little bit of the separation of duties here, whether you're going to be the tank slash meat shield, if you will, or if you're going to be DPS. We're going to get down that later in the line. Some of the things you might want to consider when you are creating your daimyo, who taught you how to fight? Is it natural instinct? of the fury, something you were trained, who owes you a favor, why do they owe you a favor, all of these things help create your backstory, give your GM some flavor to work with in creating their arcs. First up, right into it, is your hit points. Your hit die is a 1d12 per level. Your hit points at first level are 12 plus your constitution modifier. Uh, hit points at higher levels are 1d12 or 7 plus your constitution modifier per level after first. Now, your starting proficiencies, you have medium armor and heavy armor. You have melee weapons, pistols, submachine guns, shotguns, and heavy weapons. Like again, he's, he's a weapons beast. Saving throw is fortitude. And for your skills, you get to choose two from athletics, intimidation, perception, persuasion, presence, vehicles, air, and vehicles for land. Now... I uh, didn't show those on screen like I did the hit points, and that's something I'm looking for in terms of feedback. If that's a really easy one to have up there, grab the quick shot of armor, weapons, saving, throw, and skills, much like hit points that you're seeing now. Let me know down in the comments below. Because next up is our proficiencies table. Now, we're going to get into the Daimyo Focus later on down the line here a little bit in the video, but at a quick glance, if you want to pause the video to take a look at first level through tenth level, that's what the core rulebook does for pretty much all your classes, 10th level. Anything above that's going to be essentially homebrewed, so enjoy. But uh, at first level, 
As you can see, you get Fury, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then after we talk about that, you get Danger Sense, Rallying Cry, and the big one that's going to separate the video out is going to be the third level Daimyo Focus. Feel free to pause any time to get a good look at that proficiencies table. <clears throat> like right now, pause. Your Fury. You have advantage on strength checks and fortitude saving throws. You make a weapon attack using strength, you gain plus two bonus to the damage roll. This bonus increases to plus three at level nine. You have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. That's great, but what is Fury? In battle, you fight with primal ferocity. On your turn, you can enter a Fury as a bonus action. It's kind of like a Fury state, right? When you're in Fury, you gain those benefits, and your Fury lasts for one minute. It ends early if you're knocked unconscious, or if your turn ends, and you haven't attacked a hostile creature or taken damage since your last turn. I like to kind of make it a comparison to a, a warrior in an MMO role-playing game to where they have rage. You get attacked, you build rage. You take damage, you build rage, right? Similar. Not identical, but similar. In addition to that, if you go back to the pause spot in the proficiencies table, each level you also get the maximum number of Furies you can use. Once you spend the max number of Furies for your level, you must finish a long rest before you can engage Fury again. You get two Furies beginning at level one. Now, second level, really quick, you get two things at second level. You get Rallying Cry, which is natural leader. You're able to rally your allies. You can use a bonus action and choose one ally within 60 feet who can hear you, or an ally connected to you by a neural link. That ally gains one D8 rally die. Once within the next 10 minutes, the affected ally can roll the rally die and add the number rolled to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw it makes. That's pretty OP at level one, so definitely want to keep your daimyos handy, okay? The affected ally can wait until after it rolls the d20 before deciding to use the rally die, but must decide before the GM says whether the roll succeeds or fails. Once the rally die is rolled, it is lost. Fiji can have only one rally die at a time. Use this feature a number of times equal to your people modifier, a minimum of once. You regain any expended uses when you finish a long rest. And the second one up is Danger Sense. At second level, you gain an uncanny sense of nearby threats. You have advantage on reflex saving throws against effects that you can see, such as traps or explosions. To gain this benefit, you cannot be blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. Now we get into the big chunk. The Daimyo Focus. At third level, you can choose your focus, each giving different abilities. You have Sugo and Sengoku. The first one we are going to talk about is the Sugo. Sugo is the real deal. You don't feel pain, okay? This is your tank. This is your meat shield. You get Ballistic Fury. At third level, you ignore all but the most serious of pain. In addition to regular, <clears throat> excuse me, regular resistances, your Fury ability gains you resistance to Ballistic Fire and Radiation Damage. They also get Furious Focus. Furious Focus gives clarity whilst others lose their way. Starting at 6th level, you cannot be ghosted while in a Fury. And if you enter Fury while being ghosted, the effect is suspended until the Fury ends. Final piece is the Fever Pitch. This is 10th level stuff, okay? This is like endgame now we're talking about, okay? You know how to inspire confidence and work together to bring down the largest of foes. You can inspire others to fight harder. Whenever a creature spends a rally die within 60 feet of you, they roll with advantage. Very, very interesting. Now, we're going to jump over to Sengoku. These are your DPS. These are your weapons experts, capable of using in such a way that makes them even more deadly, okay? First up is your superheated weaponry. This allows you to strike foes at their weakest and wield weapons in a dangerous state. At third level, while using Fury, once per turn, when you hit a creature with a ranged weapon attack, you can deal an additional 1d6 damage. Same damage type to the target. Excuse me. Breakfast is beating a little bit here. You also get Heavy Gunner. This is at sixth level. 
As a bonus action, you may choose to ignore damage reduction of armor when firing a heavy weapon. You may use this a number of times per day, equal to your people modifier. You regain all expended uses of this ability at the end of a long rest. And last up, at level 10, you get Walking Platform. Training in heavy weapons is unmatched. You ignore penalties of long range and all cover except total cover when firing a heavy weapon. Is that OP? Yeah, but they have their weaknesses, so I would choose wisely. And again, as always, talk with your GM when you're creating these classes. You may want to homebrew some stuff. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Now we're going to talk about the additional levels after that big split and focus on third level. At fourth level, you get character improvement. And again, at eighth level, of course, where you can increase one ability score of your choice by two or two ability scores by one. Just not to confuse you, I'm going to repeat that again. At 4th level, and again at 8th level, you can increase 1 ability score by 2, or 2 ability scores by 1. Pretty sweet. Then you get, at 5th level, extra attack. Which means you can attack twice instead of once, whenever you take the attack action on your turn. That's pretty deadly, if you ask me. And then starting at 7th level, you get Keep Your Head. Your allies are motivated by your very presence. Allies within 60 feet of you have advantage on saving throws against being ghosted. Very, very delicious. And last up, you get unstoppable. You are an absolute unit, a effing juggernaut on the battlefield, stopping at nothing to obtain victory. Beginning at ninth level, you can reroll a saving throw that you fail. If you do, you must use the new roll. You can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. And that's going to sum up the Daimyo. Again, a little bit longer than the others, but not too long. Hope you enjoyed the content. Remember to subscribe and click the bell if you like this type of content. I leave the like and dislike up to you. Just give me the feedback on why you liked or disliked it. All of my social media links are down below. You'll see all the Dragon Turtle game media links down below. And the final piece of all of this is those beautiful sound effects and ambiance in the background you hear are from Sirenscape. This is not a paid ad. I've been with them for a few years. I love them for all my tabletop gaming needs in terms of sounds and audio. Check them out. Their link's also down below in the description. We'll see you guys next time. I think the dock is up next, right? I do believe so. So stay tuned. Check it out. We'll see you next time.